In this exercise, we're going to make a facial expression for the avatar. And that means using the animation tool. So always start with our clean scene. So file, new, general. That will just reset everything so that we are starting from scratch, just in case anything was done. And we need to reset. Once we've got that, we want to be in view, sidebar. So this assumes that the toolkit is installed. Sidebar, there is the toolkit. Click, and we want the animation tool for this. So click on that, and then on the append animation file button. That will replace the cube in the scene with the female avatar. So that's the female mesh. Both male and female use the same skeleton which is represented in this case because this is the animation tool by all these wires, these shapes. Each one of these corresponds to a certain bone or a certain type of movement. So the animation tool itself is basically split into two, although both parts are represented by what we see on screen. So we have essentially everything below the neckline is for making a pose, an avatar pose. So that's a static pose or an animated pose, shaking hands, sitting down, lying down, etc., etc. And everything above the neck is for making facial expressions and facial animations. And that part of the tool is split into two. So what we have are a set of control elements. That's these wires that we can see that control those specific parts of the mesh. So we've got the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, and the tongue. But the mouth, because that's much more complicated in terms of how it deforms, we can't fit all the control elements into that small area of the mesh. So instead, what we've got is this side panel that shows what shapes the mouth can take. So we've got the different shapes that indicate the type of deformation the controller will deform the mesh into. So if we select the armature, make sure that we are, right now we're in object mode, that's orange outlines. So to use the tool, we need to be in pose mode. So we need to select the armature, object, and then we want to be in pose mode. And they'll change color, indicating that we are now in the correct mode. So remembering, everything essentially above the neckline is for posing the face. So facial expressions, facial animations. Everything below is for the torso. And of course, because they are part of the same tool, we can create facial animations that accompany a body animation. But for now, we're just going to focus on the head, the face, make a quick pose. So we're in pose mode. The tool itself, we have these little control shapes as said before, and we select each one of these and move them, manipulate them, and they will move or manipulate or deform the mesh in a particular way based on the control that that element has over the mesh. It's the same for the control elements that are on the head and the control elements that are in the panel at the side. So if we just select one of them, let's select the eyebrow, use the widget. We can use that, click drag, to move the eyebrow. Similarly, if we click the little green circles, that will do the same thing. So select, and slide that along we get the shape of the mouth changing. So let's do an angry raspberry face. So select the eyebrow, frown, grab the tongue. So this is the tongue. Pull that out, rotate. So the degree of rotation will be limited based on control node itself and how that locks in 
a particular degree of movement. Let's see which one's the cheeks. So with some of the tools, we have a left and a right. And also both. So if we move this one up, down, this control node, it changes both at the same time and or left or right. Let's make this angry face. That's the wrong one. So if we make a mistake, what we can do is click on zero bone. That will zero that out. And what we also want to do, which we could have done before we started, is enable auto key. This will automatically insert a keyframe into the timeline. So that's a small marker that appears wherever the frame marker is, which is a blue slider. Enable that. And if we've missed capturing the data for any control nodes that we've moved, all we need to do is drag a selection box over the elements, selects them, and then shift click in this case for the tongue and then what we can do here is pose animation insert keyframe so pose animation insert keyframe we'll get another pop-up list and we want rotation and location that will drop in a set of keyframes so now that we've got auto key set any more additional changes will be automatically marked in the timeline. So that will be our pose. Let's change the math a little bit. And that will be our pose. So let's just save this file, save as, file, save as, we'll call this raspy pose, save as. And then for a static pose, which is what this is going to be, we want to enable make pose. And that will change the appearance of the timeline. So enable. So it shortens the duration that's available. And this essentially sets up the FBX for proper export import into iView Studio. Then we can also rename the animation so that if we are doing several animations and we want them to be distinct and selectable and importable in studio because the tool doesn't automatically update the file name 
So if we had several animations in different files, every time we exported them, it would export them with the same name, which would override any previously exported poses. So what we can do here is rename the action. Let's call that raspy. Save again over the top. And to just export the facial animation, that's all we need to do. So the next step is just exporting. So in the toolkit, we just use the export button. Click that, and the toolkit will do all the necessary jiggery pokery, creating the necessary data that's needed for Studio. And the FBX we can now import. Let's just save that so we have a copy again, and then open Studio. So in IMVU Studio, you want to create a new project. And to make sure that the animation has exported correctly and is going to work correctly in Studio or in IMVU, we want to search by PID and then search for item 10,945,930. And that will give us the empty mood. So we use this because it's stripped of any other interfering animation sequences that might cause problems. So select, derive, there's the base avatar, and then all we need to do is import our FBX. So import, import FBX. Browse to our sequence, pose raspy, FBX, and then open. So we'll go through the import process. So that's what it's seeing in the file. So set up FBX. We don't need to change this, so that's okay. All this is okay. Skeleton, that's okay. But we do want to disable this because we don't want to bring in any meshes. Leave override meshes, that's fine. Next. No materials. Next. There are our sequences. The one we want is designated morph so we can disable anim raspy because those will be the body the corresponding body sequence that's exported with the morph it has to do that in order to get the morph out so we'll have that review import so it's brought in our data so we now need to go into component and create an action. So actions plus new action and we'll call this stance.idle so that it plays all the time. Stance dot capital I D L E action type that's going to be avatar. Click ensemble so the plus button new ensemble there is the morph. So select. We want to set the loop duration from 1 to 2 and then loops infinite, so 0. Everything else is OK. We want disable gaze left untouched, so don't touch that one. And then click apply. Preview. And we should get our sequence. Now if in doing this we get the T pose appearing that's basically because the sequence has reset the skeleton. So as we don't have access to that we do know that the pose itself is working for the face but because there isn't any pose data associated with the avatar it'll just reset. So when we reassemble this on an avatar product, 
So let's try that. So new product. AT PID female avatar derive there is the avatar so actions we want to create a new one completely separate to any of these so we don't need to touch these We'll call this starts.idle again. Action type avatar ensemble. Of course, we haven't yet imported our FBX, but we're just going through the process. So our FBX would appear, or the XPF, after it's been converted on import, would appear here. So we need to import our FBX. Import FBX, browse to where it is, Raspi, open. We'll quickly go through the process. So again, that's what it's seen in the file. Set up FBX, no meshes, next, no materials, next. We just want the morph, so disable, review. So it's bringing in a skeleton because we are using the base avatar product import. So it's brought those in component actions. So there is our stance.idle so we can edit that. So we need to add the ensemble plus click on the list and there is our morph sequence so click one two zero apply review and what we may need to do because this is the avatar is change the trigger to a word so preview And there is our sequence, and now that will play. So stance.idle, when we derive from the avatars, from the base avatars 80 and 191, stance.idle doesn't necessarily trigger all the time. So what we can do is use the specific trigger that's associated with the avatar standing or sitting, which are the two primary animation sequences. So standing and sitting. So we're creating an additional standing sequence, which we can do. We can create several of these. And it just means that whatever is in this action is triggered whenever stance.standing is the active mode that the avatar is in. So whatever we put in here in our ensemble is always going to play. So the only consideration that we need to keep in mind doing it this way is that because we've got this set the way we have, any underlying animation sequence that's playing in the avatar will play out, will blend in with whatever sequence we've animated or we've created. As we can see, the avatar's eyebrows are twitching because we've still got start, stop, sitting, standing, blink, wave. These as the defaults. So if you wanted to prevent that, we would have to override the defaults. And that would mean editing the available action and editing all the ensembles that are associated, the default ensembles that are associated with that action. But that is how we create morph animations or facial expressions 
for avatars using the toolkit.